We're supposed to have a demonstration by Bob Moffat this evening, and I don't see Bob in the mix tonight unless he's coming up under an alias. Bob, are you out there right now? I'm right here. Yeah. How you he's, doing tonight? He, he's Birdhouse Bob now. Oh, That's Bird. right. There he is. Uh, the my official sorry. nickname in there. How you doing, Bob? How y'all doing tonight? All righty, sir. It was sorry we we're didn't get make, to you. I've been looking for you for 15 minutes. We're going to make a couple birdhouses tonight. And uh, I want to show you a couple that I've made. And we'll start off making one similar to this. Oh, that's cool. Can you see that in the camera? That's see, I, I, had, I had a preview for you for tonight. And uh, we pop over to... Way to pop back when, I, when I sell when I sell these, control oh okay, preview of what? Well, I, I I was going to say you know we had this little thing to show oh. you here, and then we had another another one that you know Bob Bob did. Bob does nice little birdhouses. Go ahead, Bob. I'm backing out. Is Bob still there? I'm out. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. I'm bringing him up. All right. All right, Bob, all hey, you, buddy. This is, this is another style we'll make if we get to it. Uh, one of the things I do on these is I make the bases all the same. Now, this one came with a bird. My wife put that on there. Uh -huh. but, uh, I make the bases all the same. I make the holes for them to go in all the same. The perch is all the same. And the finials, the hole for the finials the same if I put a finial on. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And then another one I made, I was at John Campbell and they had a green bowl class the week before us. And I saw this bark laying there from just old scraps of, of wood. And so I made a top out of the bark. And uh, that nice. seemed like that. That is cute. That is nice. One of the things too is when, I, when somebody gets one, I tell them they get these hooks to go with it. And they just think that's wonderful. When you get these for about a hundred for about a couple dollars off Amazon. But they nice. think that's great. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off making the base. And the base, we'll make one base. And as we have time, we'll see how many tops we can make. But we'll make the base first. We'll put a one inch tenon here. And instead of using cal, well, first I'm gonna curve this in on the base, but instead of using calipers, I'm gonna drill a one inch hole in the top. So why don't I just use the one inch uh, drill bit as my caliper. And that's just a quick measuring way. And I'll use a, use a badan, I could use a badan or I could use a, uh, parting tool to make my tenon. Either one will be fine. But I'm just going in since this is one inch and I want a one inch tenon. I'm just going until my tool hits that and I've got it. So now what we'll do is we'll shape the uh, body of the birdhouse. That's a great idea. It's almost cheating, huh, Ryan? Worth the price of admission. No, oh, almost cheating. Almost cheating. And I forgot to take my take my spindle. I like the way out, you use so that bidet. That. And this is just a plain old three eighths inch spindle gouge. I don't use any real specialized tools doing these. Only the and one on I'll your do, head. <laughs> and what I'll do here is I'm going to put a curve in the top. By putting a curve in the top, it sort of makes makes this look like it drops down below the roof. If you can, I don't know if you can see that curve or not. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, it makes it look like the body drops down below the roof. So I'm just using my spindle gals.
I'm just making a little curve. And if you'll notice, when I use my toe, I bring my handle around. That gives me a curve. If I just went straight in here like that, I'd just have a straight line. Now you can make any, that's any shape you want to make it. So I'm just going to come in and drop it in like this. And I'm going to curve in. Now if you'll notice on these that I've had, every one of them is the, uh, a different shape on the bottom, but the tenon is always the same. So I'm just coming in, I'm bringing my tool handle around, and I'm coming back out and bringing it around again, the other way. Now, so that's going to be the shape, outside shape of my base. You'll notice this is one shape. This is another shape. And you can sort of see that curve better on that one. But it's a different shape. Yep. And this is still a different shape. So uh, your audio just got lower. He is really changing cameras. The audio is following the camera. So I'm just going to come around like this. All right, now I want to look at it and I want to, I'm going to put a finishing cut, just make a real light cut. And I have these in a the gallery and they sell pretty well. So sell better than my bowls do. What kind of wood are you using there tonight? What kind of wood? This is a piece of maple. Oh, good. That I'm finish gonna, is real nice. This, and I say, okay, where was a neat place to put the perch? My grain lines are going straight down like this. That wouldn't look like much. All right, here I've got my grain lines going in a U shape. And here I've got them going in a bigger U shape. Now I was saying this, but I don't think y'all want to watch me saying. So I'm going to put my, my hole for my bird to get in somewhere right in here, about the center. Now I use a drill a one eight, I mean one quarter inch hole there because it's just for small birds. And I use a brad point drill bit. And I don't take it off the lathe or special jig. I just, with a brad point drill bit, I've got that little point on it. And so I just sort of push it in and it's not going to run on me. The regular drill bit's going to run on me. Did this demo in uh, Brass Town. And I couldn't find my quarter inch drill drill bit. And I was looking all over for it. And they said, well, look in your drill. And there it was. It's like magic. <laughs> right where and you now I'm going to switch to a one eighth inch hole or one eighth inch. This is going to be for my perch. And I could either put it below it or I could put it to the side of it. Can't put it above it because then the bird will have to be upside down. <laughs> I'm just going to put it below it. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our hole for our in, for our entrance right here, and then we've got our hole for our perch. Now, if I wanted to put a finial in this, I would just drill a hole through the bottom a quarter inch and make a quarter inch tenon on my finial. But I'm not going to put a finial on this one. So, okay, now for hollowing it, I have a very special tool that I use for most of the hollowing. It's called a three quarter inch sparsen bit.
And since I've got a one eighth inch tenon and I'm using a three quarter inch bit, I'll have a one eighth inch. I mean, since I got a one inch tenon and a three quarter inch hole, I'll have drill, I'll have a one, one eighth inch wall there. And let's see how deep we want to do it. We'll do a little deep measuring here. Okay, so I want to go about that deep. I'm going about five or six hundred RPMs. Okay. Something always goes wrong. And I got a key here. There we go. I talked to a friend of mine, used to live at Kitty Hawk, and uh, we were talking about the birdhouses and stuff, and I told him about these birdhouses, and he said, well, they're too small for a seagull. And I said, okay. I said, well, and I asked him, I said, well, why does the seagull always fly over the ocean? And uh, he said, well, simple. He says, if it flew over the bay, it'd be a bagel. After my joke, I thought that was a pretty good. Stand, stand by, Doug Rowe. You got competition. What they say? <laughs> okay, I didn't bring the hollow in tool. I saw Jim Selby wiping his eyes. I don't know if he's crying with you or for you. Now I'll take my hollow in tool. And just hollow this out. And I don't think I bought it. Hmm. No. But anyway, that's what I do. We can use a spindle gouge to do some of the hollowing. This is not the kind of hollowing that you do for a three hundred dollar hollow form. This is just to get weight out. And one of the neat things about this hollowing, since we drill that hole, I can just look in here and see how far I've hollowed it. And I don't have to wait for that line to show up there. I hollowed it all the way through. If y'all didn't like my seagull joke, I got some worse ones. Uh, no, 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 we liked it. We really did. We had everybody muted. That's why you didn't hear it, Bob. Okay, so we've hollered all we're going to holler. And it's, I'll claim it's about an eighth of an inch thick. <laughs> Do the finger tap. That's, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want to watch me holler anymore than you want to watch me sand. Or listen to any more of my jokes. No, no, they're good. Keep them coming. I'm going to take a little wood off here just to get it out of the way. And one of the benefits of doing these and making uniform size holes and stuff is that I could sit here and do these. And if I want to do these and do tops later on, you know, I could do that and then just put them together later. All right, so that's our bottom. And we're going to use our skew and cut the bottom off. Now, if I was going to put a finial on this, it'd be good to have a little bit of a flat there at the bottom to match the finial up, and that way I wouldn't have to recess it into the base of the finial. 
And I would also drill a quarter inch hole through the bottom to hold it. Well, it always helps to get a catch while you're doing it too. Oh, I thought you were showing us the hazards. <clears throat> Okay, so that's going to be our bottom. Huh? That's our bottom there. Nice. Got a hole in it. It's got a nice catch on it. If I turn a spiral on it, not everybody can turn those spirals now. <clears throat> Bob, who's your partner in crime tonight? What do you say? He said, who's your partner? Land Brady. All right. Land the Magnificent. <laughs> Take a bow, Land. He's my video production manager. Oh, he wow. Fine job. He told me all the jokes to tell y'all, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm going to stick with my camera check. <laughs> He's been working on these jokes for three weeks. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting the step center in here and put my live center in, and this is going to be my top. I've already marked the centers, marked the centers on it. <clears throat> Am I holding that in the right place? Okay. And I'm just going to use my tail stock. You'll sort of push it in to get a little hole there. I already got a hole on that end. Now my top has to be bigger than the bottom. There won't be much of a roof if it's not. So the first thing we'll do, this isn't too square, so we'll square the end off. I'm going to put a tenon on this end. Okay, so I'll square this end off. Now, I don't have to, this isn't perfectly round, but I don't really have to worry about that except for one place. What is this length size? Oh, it's uh, three inches. And this is, that reminds me of something to show you here. This is almost two inches. Take your magnet, I mean, take your tape magnet, epoxy your magnet on the back of it, and you can stick it on your lathe and you can always find it. Hmm. And I've got one of those on each of my power tools in my shop. And, uh, Okay, so we're going to make this round right here. Okay, so that's going to be... That's not quite round yet. Also, a... The thing that I like to do is I just leave my own switch on, but I turn the volume, I mean, turn the speed up and down with the uh, speed control. That's, just, that's what I do as well, Bob. It's, to me, it's just a little safer and you don't end up, you know, having turned a spindle and then turn a bowl later on and it's running wide open. Right. And flies out at you. Hey, Barnett taught me that trick. Huh? Ronnie Barnett taught me that trick. Oh, okay. and you oh, listen to it? demonstrate it? Yeah, that's how he did it. He said, yeah, turn this down. Don't turn it off. Turn it down. Well, when he was, did you watch his demonstration? Yeah. Did you put his lathe in reverse for, before he started? 
Uh, <clears throat> don't talk about it. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> I, I put a pin through the, uh, the photo reverse switch on my paramatic. I get sick and tired of turning it off uh, and going the other way. <laughs> well, that puts the wood back on instead of taking it off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start shaping our top. To it. And I'm going to use my bowl gouge. I could use the spindle gouge, but I just like this bowl gouge. Stock removal. It gets it done pretty quick. Yep. And I'm doing like I did with the spindle gouge. I'm bringing the handle around, and that gives me a curve. It also makes a mess on my shirt. My wife loves that. And is that a piece of maple as well? Did this demo one time. And I didn't quite have it on center. And lady in the audience says, "Well, this said, well, the, your your uh, head tail, your drive center, and your tailstock aren't, you know, they're on aren't in the center of the piece of wood." And I said, "Well, they will be." Bob, is that a piece of maple? I'm rubbing my bevel the whole time I'm cutting. Now you can make this any size you want to, too, as long as it's bigger than the bottom. If it's smaller than the bottom, the bird will get wet when it rains, so you don't want that. I have a cage pop up in here. Okay. Bob, what kind of wood is that? Do what? What kind of wood? Is Cherry. Cherry. I like to uh, use contrast in woods. I'm just shaping my top now. All right, I'm going to take it out from between centers now. Take my step center out. Put this in my chuck. Now, if you don't have a chuck with the smaller jaws, these are the step jaws. What you can do is use your number two jaws, and these really shouldn't be open this wide, but I didn't bring but one chuck with me. And I'm going to stay away from up here. But you can use a uh, Take a piece of scrap wood and make you some jam chucks and use the number two jaws with it. And I always drill a hole in my jam chuck so if it gets on there too tight, I can just take a tool and just knock it out. Okay, so now we're going to take our live center out and go back to our 
one inch drill bit. Hey, Ronnie, watch this. This is the second half of the cheating. And I'm going to drill a hole in here to accept that tenon. And you size the tenon with the same drill bit. Right. That way they're more than likely match. Now I don't need to go in real deep. Just deeper than the tenon. And then this fit in like this. And if I decide I'm gonna cut this back some, which I probably should have done first, but that's all right. I just run my tail stock up in there. Take my spindle gouge. and recess my roof a little bit. Okay, so now I need to, now that I've recessed my roof, I need to drill my hole a little deeper. No problem. And y'all wonder why I'm using two different chucks. You know, one like this and then one like this. It was so I hoped I rem would remember. Is, you wonder why I'm using two chucks, one like this one and one like this one. It's so I was hoping I would remember which drill to use. <laughs> Somebody hit the symbol. Ding. That wasn't a joke, that was serious. I know that's why we worry. <laughs> These are a fun little project to make too because they don't take a long time. Bob, you did the undercut because if you can't look at the line, you won't see the crack, correct? What's he saying? I couldn't hear you. I'm when you, you undercut that cap, Right. You put a concave on it because right. if you can't see that joint, it that crack, it won't show. That's so right. You, you move it. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to take this down a little bit. And you can make this as long as you want it to. Only thing you got to be careful about here is if you go in real deep, you don't want to go through that hole. The only reason I know about that is because Land told me about it. Oh, good. And if you're uncomfortable, you know, using a spindle gouge to do this, you could do this with a scraper. Use a round nose scraper. That would work. Bird. All right, so that's you our could... top right there. Now, we have to figure out a way to to drill a hole on the top of it. And I don't have a drill bit long enough to reach through my headstock to get to it. So what am I going to do? Mm. I'll show you. And I have a special drill bit that I use that you can't get at a lot of hardware stores. But I'm going to tell you where you can get it. I 
Okay, so we're going to cut this off. Use my DeWalt parting tool. All right, so we've cut this off. This piece of wood's got a crack in it, but that's all right. Now you say we're going to make a jam chuck here. No, no, sir. That's too much trouble. We could if we all we had number two jaws. We could get a one inch dowel and make a jam chuck out of it. But we can just screw this puppy in right here. This will go down to less than an inch. We got an inch hole. Shazam. There we go. So now we've got this chucked up. We'll take our live center. Put it in here. Turn it on. Look at there, running right on, right true. There's our starter hole. The point on our live center. Now we're going to use our special drill bit that we can't get at a hardware store. And you can't get it at Harbor Freight. So you think if you think if you can't get it at Harbor Freight, it's probably not worth buying. Can we get it at Sears? It's called a paper clip. This is the exact size fit for I, I get the screw eyes at uh, Hobby Lobby, and this is a perfect fit of small paper clip. Turn this on. Push it in there, and our hole's drilled. Okay. So now we've got our base. We got our top. That's a good hint. Everybody would have been going to the hardware looking for a tiny drill bit. Well, paperclip works just as well. I know. That's what I'm yeah, saying. That's a good tip there. Yeah. Okay, Paper so now clip, we'll sewing needle. I don't know. I've never tried one. I would worry about the tape on the needle versus the paper clip. It's got a, a blunt edge. But hey, you got to try it. One of these things, you know, for paper clip, you know, if you lose it, you just go and get another one. They can sell them by the box load. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to make our perch. And what I normally do for perches, if I want to <laughs> use a fancy wood, I'll take a pin blank and put it on my bandsaw. Where we at? There we go. You don't switch the camera. You know. I'll take a pin blank and put it on my bandsaw, cut it once this way, and cut it once this way. And I got enough wood for four perches. Actually, I got enough wood for probably hmm, probably does at least a dozen perches. This is a piece of scrap that I had that I'm going to use to make the perch out of. It's a piece of walnut. And I could also make the finial out of what's left. I just chuck it up. And... Actually, I like to have a contrast between have the same wood for the perch and the finial, but have a contrast between the wood for the base. Now I'm finally going to measure something. So this is an eighth of an inch, so I just set my calipers to an eighth of an inch. On your calipers, a good thing to do is sort of round those tips off. 
because that way if you stick them suck them down on the wood there's nothing that's going to catch because it's going to be round Let's see where it's, there we go And this is a piece of walnut. I'm using my spindle gouge now, just rounding off the end. And like so, put a little bulb on the end of it. And then just come down with my spindle gouge so I get down to about a, close to an eighth of an inch. Now you got to be a light touch here, because you haven't got much wood. Okay, so we're, man, that's a miracle. We hit it the first time. So I'd stand that just a little bit. And cut it off. And that would fit right in here. Little fella's got a place to, a little place to stand and look inside. If his mama, she's got a place to look inside and see the kids. Okay. And then we, I could use the rest of this piece of wood to do a finial with. Y'all want me to do a finial or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would have <clears throat> drilled a quarter inch hole in the bottom of this to mount the finial. Let's see. Where's my key? Right there, right where I put it. Alvis Turners who are joining us. That head that head shield he is wearing is a Uvex, and there's an article on the front page of our website right now concerning that shield and more about it. So before you say, oh wait, where can I get that? We give it to you. You need a customized face shield. Nobody will walk out with this thing. Hey, <laughs> yeah, right. Not with not with that customization. No. I got this at McDonald's because this is when I'm happiest, is when I'm turning. Is that Kim's collar uh, lips? It's Doug's collar, maybe. <clears throat> You better be careful how you joke about the first sergeant. Y'all know he's got a gun. I'm just going to turn a real simple one because, you know, you can spend a long time turning the pendulum. Liam, is there any way you can capture his tool handle presentation there? Huh? 
This will probably be not be one that puts Cindy Drozo out of business. You're well on your way. Oops. Hey, you need a little trick here in just a second. At least I think it's neat. It's better, it's better than a seagull joke. Uh, I was going to say, you thought the cigar joke was good. I'm worried. <clears throat> now, I've turned us. If you're interested, this video, this portion of this video, this demonstration will be up on our website in about 10 days. Our webmaster will have it. He will edit it. That portion will have its own little chapter if you'd like to see it. We'll go to measuring again. Is this got to fit in a quarter inch hole? Take you a quarter inch wrench, file the bottom down. Don't do that on a CBN wheel. You put it on there, it'll do your final trimming, and it'll be exactly a quarter of an inch. Okay, so that would be our finial. Then if we put a flat on, drill the hole, would just fit on the bottom here. Get over where the camera is. So this is the whole thing put together. You just have to imagine that hole there because it's not there. Okay. So we've made the finial and we made our perch and we made our bottom. And now we're gonna make a different top. What do you glue them together with? What do you glue it together with? I just use regular wood glue. I don't like the smell of CA glue, so I just use regular wood glue. You see uh, Frank, uh, I mean the tight bond glue. And I mean, you just put it on there and just rub it a little bit and it'll stick together. One thing important about putting it together is you want to like this grain is going this way. This grain's going like this. I want it where this grain's going this way. So they're both sort of that grain and then that grain. And the same thing on the finial. That grain. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we're gonna do a cooler top. I got a piece of cherry here. I'm gonna put it between centers and I'm gonna turn it round. I'm just going to sort of eyeball this.
And so we'll take our spindle roughing gouge and just round this out. Because it ain't too shapely right now. And this is a piece of green wood that was split. Like he got the good out of that roughing gouge. Yeah, he's getting the most, he's making it a detail roughing gouge. Bob didn't tell you he got that roughing gouge. This piece is big enough. Bob got that piece to another piece. Six years old. Let's see. <laughs> Let's use this piece instead. It's still working. What'd they say? That'll be a base later on. This is how I make those sloped roofs. And this is a piece of ambrosia maple. It was split, it was green. One of the things when I'm doing between centers, I like to have my handle on my tail stock over on this side. So if it gets loose, it's going to tighten instead of if it's over here and it gets loose, it's going to come loose and it could fly off at me. And give it a spin here. See if we're clearing. Yeah, this is going to be a good piece of wood. <laughs> See how big a mess you can make with this? That's well, just about round, I think. Let's see. A little flat over here. Okay, that's pretty well round. All right. Oh, that's a pretty piece of wood. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put a mark here, straight across, and then over here, and I'm using my tool rest, so I can get pretty much the center. Right here, B. And I'm going to measure and find the center here. All right, this is four and almost a quarter. So that'd be two and just under an eighth. So that's gonna be my center. And I'm gonna mark, using my tool rest for a straight edge, I'm gonna mark from this center where I drew a line at the, across the end this way. So what I'm ending up with All right, so I drew a line here through the center straight across. Huh? Okay, can you see it now? Okay, I drew a line here straight across through the center and the same thing on the other side. All right, then I drew a line from this point to this point and the same thing on the other side. So this is 180 degrees from this line. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to rechuck it. All right, I want 
that's the prettiest side of this piece of wood. So I want that to be my bottom. So I'm going to rechuck it where those two lines right there intersect. Can you see those two lines? Okay, let's see. All right, they intersect right there. And that's half from here to here. All right, so I'm going to put it between centers and I'm going to put my drive center right here and my live center right here. Now, this is going to get exciting. You're going to see this and you're going to say, oh, Bob, I can't believe you did that. That's going to be I believe you have fingers left. <laughs> Makes a marvelous sound. Okay, and we're gonna put a tenon on this side. And then we're gonna put it in the chuck. So we're gonna cut this at an angle like that. And then on the inside, the same angle. Now, if you're off a little bit on any of your measurements, it doesn't matter because this is going to come out a little wonka, isn't it? What do you say? He says it's going to come out wonka, isn't it? Yeah. Like Willy Wonka. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I thought Willie did this. And that's part of the intrigue to it. Okay, I'm going to use my bowl gouge to cut this with. And you see how it's spinning? Back to that if you think about it, if you've ever turned a natural edge bow, you're sort of doing the same type of thing. Because you're going to have your top curved like this. And you've got to go all the way to the tips here. It looks like I'm not quite straight there. But I can correct that. There we go. That's close enough. Like I said, the bird's getting a free place to live, so it can't be too cheesy. <laughs> Move my tool rest in a little bit. Give it a spin. We're coming straight in at the top. And I'm actually riding my bevel. Yep, see those shavings? And I want to go all the way to the bottom of this. So I'm looking at my shadow line. Like when I start getting near the bottom, I want to come in like come in backwards with I'm resting my tool, the back of my tool against the wood, but it's not cutting. So I'm just doing this to find the edge. And then I'm gonna come in and cut like this. I'm taking pretty light cuts at this point. And you'll keep your hand clear of the edge. Lynn told me about that. You do it, you only do it once. The edge would get pretty sharp. Mm 
Okay, so we got our edges there. We need to cut a little bit more. See where we're at now. Not quite. Almost there. See, we've got a little bit of flat spot there we want to get rid of. All right, that should have gotten it. We'll come back in. Sort of blend those two cuts in. Put my foot back in there. I mean, my tenon back in there. So now we got our tenon. Take our step center out. These are nice step centers that you can put them in your chuck. I go get me one if Land's not looking. That's Land's step center. But if he's not looking, I don't know who it'll belong to, but I got an idea. You're going to put a magnet on it, aren't you? I think he's putting an eyeball on it. <laughs> he may be putting an eyeball on you about now. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> See, you have one of those metal detectors at a shop door like I do? Yeah. <laughs> is that what that thing is? I thought it was a welcome sign. Okay, we had a one inch tenon on our base. So we need a one inch mortise. And we're going to drill it. So it's just past right here at the top of that curve. Let's see if we're deep enough. You could put some oil on that bit. Almost. I'll do it. It's Land's bit. Yeah. Okay, that should be about right. That might need to be a little deeper, but we'll get that later. So now we'll come in with a spindle gouge and we'll sort of hollow this out. I guess you call it hollowing it out.
Actually, these are a fun little project to make, and uh, they don't take a whole lot of time. They don't make a whole lot of mess. Okay, we've got to come in some more. Our holes aren't deep enough, but that's all right. We can fix that. Okay, that's good. We'll drill a hole a little deeper. Okay. We'll turn it around. You take the tail. Hey, Dane, I think we found a way to help Bob out on his uh, step center thing. How's yeah, that? I believe so. Yeah, there's 78 people here. You think Lynn can check all those pockets at one time if we rush out? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if he had his magnet, right? Uh, if he don't have that magnet thing going, we out of here. <laughs> magnet man. <clears throat> well, Captain Eddie, I heard you were going to pay me enough to buy me one. Uh, well, we just doubled your wage because you're doubling how many roofs you're doing. <laughs> this is my fancy dam chuck, which is a one, eight, one inch dowel <laughs> with a tenon on it. Now I can't put this directly on the on the on the chuck because of this wings coming down. Now folks are asking why would he put a tenon on that on that jam chuck? It's because if you just put the dowel in there, it may have a walk up and down or side to side. With the tenon, he's got a shoulder for the jaws to come up against that eliminate that walk. And the paper towel tightens it up enough. And I can put my live center in it. Now I'll get it straight. And I'll also start drilling my hole. Okay, there we go. And Bob, because you were holding it between points, you had an automatic reference point for that point to go into, didn't you? Right. Uh huh. And that that puts me puts it on there straight. Whereas if I was just jamming it on there, I might get it and I might not. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Matthew, you've done a, two or three of these, this is not nearly as complicated as it, it might look like. I mean, there's steps involved, but.
And so we'll trim that off. Then we'll take our handy dandy office depot drill. Now don't grab it while it's spinning. We'll take it off the jam chuck. And that's our next birdhouse. How about that? That, that is so cool. But that's wait. really nice. But wait, wait, there's more. Just like Paul Harvey. There's more. Our group is old enough to bar. remember Paul Harvey. The young people won't. That's right. This, let me tell you the rest of the story. We take a piece of bark. Fill a one inch hole in it. Fill a little hole for our uh, hook to go in. And you'll just be amazed. If we want it square like that. We could have it like that. We could put it on our chuck we got a one inch hole and I'm just drilling into the I sanded the wood back I, I cut it on the bandsaw and then sanded some of it back so not as much shows at the very edges and left some in the middle now this is where you definitely want to wear a face shield If we want it round, that's because the bark might be worse than the bite, right? <laughs> oh man, it Jeez. is. <laughs> Unless There's it's Jeff. we missed you, Jeff. Unless it's poison ivy on it. If you want it around now, you're going to take the light cuts here. For the beginners out there and the folks that haven't done turnings like that, you're basically turning on a shadow line. That's what you're watching. We had a better view from the end stock than you might have from the over I'm the top. Taking that wood piece. off here, off, off the edge now. And don't grab this while it's turning either. Let's see, you could round it off like that. You have that as your roof. Are you there? Wow, that's nice, Bob. That is, and people yeah. people really like those. So. Absolutely, very nice. And very uh, nice. and I mean that. How much easier could that be? Drill a hole, put it together. So hold everything up. You just did, Bob. Hmm. Hold up everything you just did. <laughs> And Bob, can you hear me, Bob? Yeah. All right, you only get one shot at this. Tell them there's a phone call for him in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you only get one shot at it. Point to the corner of the shop and say, look, there's a rabbit. 
I think it would fit inside of a birdhouse and make its way out. That's right. That's awesome, Bob. It, really great demo. And there's your finger to put, you know, put on any of them if you wanted to. Awesome, Bob. Great demo. Really? And I nice. did the, I did the math there, for you on that pen. Hey, Bob, I That's did the awesome. math for you on that pen blank. You should oh, be able to get 30 of them. Nice job. Fun it's doing. funny, too. Huh? Uh huh. Brenda said you're funny, too. I'll try. You like my, my, my seagull joke? Yeah. All right. You know, why, you know why golfers always take two pairs of pants with them? In case they no. get a hole in one. In case they get a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're only fueling them on. This is worse than giving Doug Rowe a pot of gas. <laughs> this is. Thanks for the demo, Bob. Thank you. Fantastic, Bob. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight, sir. Well, thank yeah. you for letting me. Very good, I enjoyed demo. It. That was I fun. rung the bell for you. You're done. Thank You're you. Done. Okay. I have thank a quick you. question. When when you Go ahead, uh, please. yeah, when you put that stub center in your your chuck, is that a special kind of a stub center or or is that just your regular Morris taper one? I use a Morse taper. You can do a Morse taper one the same way. It doesn't hurt a, the taper. My my Morse taper's got a shoulder on it. The way to grab the jaws will grab the shoulder. Right. Most uh, of them have a shoulder. It's tapered straight. Okay. Yeah. The shoulder will help you square it up. Here's a, here's but a remember Morse if you damage the if you damage the stub center, don't drive it back into your headstock. Don't. Exactly. Now here's a Morse taper one that you could put in there. Oh, uh, keep holding it up, Bob, while I pour you back up. And just got slide you. it in here like this. I got you. Hold it back up, Bob, and shoulder to shoulder. There we go. It hits on the shoulder. And tighten it down. That'll keep it oriented to being true. That's pretty true. Step centers are terribly underrated to some folks. Yeah. They are an awesome piece of equipment if you take care of them. But like, Bob, I got a question. Also, Go with the step center, if you get a catch, it's not going to fly off at you. True. It'll spin. Uh, yeah. Bob, I got a question for you. Go ahead, sir. I, I'm curious. You used your bedan the yeah. way I was taught it. You used it upside down. I used mine with the taper up instead of down. Well, that's because you're from Australia. Difference? What's that? That's because you're from Australia. No, I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's. That's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> is there a right or a wrong way to use the badan? Can you use it either way? So. Or is it... That's just the way I learned how to use it. Okay. That's how if I, you're I using use it, it the way Bob does as well. If you use it the way you're talking about, uh, Scott, is you're actually going to attack it more of a scraper than a, a slicer. And Bob has got a chance to do a ride that bevel to control his is cut, so he's doing it more as a slicer. Okay, thanks. I'm going to try mine the other way just to see how it works. All right, yeah, good. You'll, you'll That's like why we here. Scott. Thank you. All right, guys. I'm going to ask the stupid question. No, uh, stupid go question. ahead. <laughs> what is the the, the bedan you're talking about? I'll show you. Okay, just the bedan. All right, let me get back to you, Bob. Okay, show. It's like it half a parting tool and wider. There's no taper going across it, Brenda. It's a square. It's a piece okay. of rectangular I stock. It was just a parting it's tool. A taper right here. Okay. You can use it as a parting tool, like like what Bob was yeah, using. You it. You can use it to make tool. beads. You know, you can use it to level your wood. It's 
All yeah. kinds of uses. Use it like it's good for my, hey, use it like making, a Oh, yeah. Ten, uh, <laughs> but dovetail tenon, because you can run it in and then give it a little twist. Yep. You get your dovetail. Yeah, it's a French skew. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that works. <laughs> you'll have no idea what y'all doing at our international relationships. Uh, <laughs> again, Bob, the great demo, sir. Appreciate you coming forward as a member to show us this and share with us. You've been sharing your birdhouses for over a year with us, and we appreciate you showing how it's done. And hopefully, we'll see some birdhouses pop up. If anybody has any questions about it, they can email me at woodturnerbob at gmail if they want to. And just put birdhouse in the subject line. And it's woodturnerbob at gmail. At gmail. All right. And just, just put birdhouse in the subject line. Thank you, Bob, again. All right.